Hey, what's happening guys? Here is a unique tool that you may be familiar with depending on what uh, type of career you've had and you may not be familiar with it. This is a wire tracer transmitter and its receiver and they allow you to find a wire in a house or a building or something like that. Let me demonstrate. Okay, we're here in my kitchen. <laughs> Here's a telephone jack. Like most of you, I've gone, you know, all cellular. There's no real telephone left here. So we plug the toner and tracer in. And we'll turn it on to tone. Now let me get out the receiver. Turn it on here. And as I put it up to the wires, you can hear that sound. And that sound lets you know that you are looking at the correct wire for the other end where you plug this in. So come with me. Hidden behind this large Steeler poster is another telephone outlet. Hard to do with one hand, friends. Give me a second. And it allows me to isolate directly the wire. You see it really doesn't show up on the green and yellow. Right here on the red and black. We're good. Okay, so now you've seen how they work, we can take them apart and see what makes them work. Now this one also has a continuity feature, which is nice. It'll tell you if the lines you're looking at have a short. So let's start by taking apart the transmitter. It's very light. I expect to find a very small circuit board in here with nothing but some sort of oscillator and perhaps some form of amplifier. Of course, there'll be filtering, you know, passive components, but I'm talking about actual legs of the circuit. Give me a second to get it reads all the way out. Okay. Always got to be one, doesn't there? Or in this case, two. Alright. So here's our circuit board with just a phenomenal solder job there. It looks like somebody took a ball of hot solder and just threw it at the doggone thing. We'll repair that. So there we go. There's our circuit. Can you read what that chip is? So it's a CD4069, which is a hex inverter. And that makes it easy to make a really simple oscillator. All you need to do is put a little RC circuit between an input and an output. Because when an inverter receives a zero, it makes a one. When it makes a one, it receives a zero. The RC will give it a little time to get from one to the other, and boom. You got yourself an oscillator. So there's really not a whole lot to see here. We've got our chip. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six resistors, one, two capacitors. Couple little diodes there. 
big diode for protection there, and a couple LEDs. Tell you what, let's uh, put a battery back in it, and take a look at the waveform on the oscilloscope. Sound like fun? Here's our oscilloscope probe. Positive. Negative. And we'll, we'll turn her on. Now, we will come up to the scope. Pardon me, it's going to be a bumpy ride for a second. And I'm going to shut out some of these lights so we can see better here. Okay, so we're looking at the waveform. What we're seeing is kind of just a square wave, basically, at 1.2 kilohertz. And peak to peak. Peak to peak looks like 12 volts. had the probe attenuation wrong there just had to switch it after yeah, so just a little over one kilohertz square wave nothing special at all all right so now we know how it's making the tones let's find out how it's receiving them i'm going to put this together off camera Okay, so, whoops, in the transmitter, we found an oscillator, but no amplifier, but it was putting out quite a strong signal there at 12 volts. I do expect to find some sort of of an amplifier in here, although I could be incredibly wrong. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'll get the screws out. Wow, got them all in the first shot. Amazing. So here we have our antenna. That's not going to come out of there. I was going to take that out. Here we have a small 8 ohm half watt speaker. We've got an electrolyte capacitor here, the potentiometer, which is the volume knob and switch, and a transistor as well. I am going to take these screws out so I have just a little more room to work here. Okay. Oh, there we go. Well, I'll be darned if that don't look like a soldering iron tip. I doubt it is. But it sure is what it looks like. All right, transistor is 2N5457. I'll blow that up. So the 5457 is JFET, which is interesting. And that chip. I don't know how I'm going to read that. So, that I see, focus, it's an LM386, a simple audio amplifier. So, our signal is coming in, going through a capacitor, a resistor, then through a leg of that JFET, 
Come out through another capacitor, making it up in here to the LM386, where it is being amplified to audio frequencies. The DC is coupled out here with this DC blocking electrolytic trans, trans look, capacitor, <laughs> and the resulting AC signal is delivered to your ear via the little speaker. And there you have it. A hex inverter being used as an oscillator. And two separate amplifiers here. An electrical amplifier from that JFET transistor. And an audio amplifier in the form of the LM386. And that, my friends, allows tradesmen who work in the telecommunications field. Um, if you've ever seen those guys open up a box and there's a couple thousand pairs of wires and you wonder how they figure out which one's yours, well, first of all, they should be tagged. But never trust anything you haven't verified yourself. So they plug this guy into your house. They can go down the block. To the box and find the exact pair that serve you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching this and my heartfelt support to the people of Ukraine. God bless you all. Dogly, what you doing? Say hi to the nice people. Yes? <laughs> yep, that's about all you get. She don't really make any noise.